Hey, buddy. I'm sorry. I don't believe we've met. King in waiting, huh? So you're not the king. A pleasure to meet you, Renver. I have a few questions. You said you were king in waiting? Hmm. I see. I'm in need of your assistance. I come with news of most dire nature. I have a tale to tell. Once upon a time, in a faraway land, I was on a blimp, and it was all like, oh, this is awesome, I'm on a blimp, but then it got crashed and, like, attacked by ogres, and it fell down, and everyone died. Except me, and a gnome, but the gnome wasn't a gnome, he was a dwarf with a shaven beard, and he gave me a ring and told me to find the boy. Turns out the boy was actually a really old man, I think the dwarf was a little stupid, but, uh... He was actually an old man named Gilbert Bates, and Gilbert Bates told me to find the Black Mountain Clan, but the Black Mountain Clan wasn't at the Black Mountain Mines. And they told me it was at the Isle of Despair, and I went to the Isle of Despair, but they weren't there either, and now everyone's trying to attack me and kill me, and they have bad-looking amulets, but they wear them anyways, and, and I just saw Aaron Axe, and he was pretty rude. So do you know where the Black Mountain Mine Clan things are? Where are the dwarfs? Yes, and I was there, and there was no sign of the Black Mountain Clan dwarfs. I said that already. Bye, Alberic. Plus two. The elves? What is going on here? Business of your father, huh? What happened to your father, Ranver? Hmm. Where is he, Ranver? What happened to him? aren't answering me. Please, Ranver, I need to know what has happened here. He permitted the banishment of his own people? By the elves? What? So where is he? And then... Hmm, that's not good. I'm very sorry. What do the elves have to do with this? Interesting. What crimes? What had the Black Mountain Clan done? Technology? What did the rest of the clan say? They didn't know, huh? And what of Gilbert Bates? What role did he play? Yeah. Appears he does not like humans. Personally, I kind of agree with him. Who were these elves? It seems I'll have to speak with Loghair. Where is he? The dredge? What is it, and where can I find it? Oh, the dredge. Oh, the dredge. Where can I expect to find in this, uh, dredge? Oh, yeah, the dredge is the longest, most difficult, most annoying, most painful dungeon in this entire game. Luckily for me, I won't be going through it. You must know where he is. Can I convince you to tell me? You're his son and his heir. You have gone looking for him. Well, yes, you do. And what has he left behind for you, Ranver? Exactly. You've done your best, though, Renfrew. Your father would be proud. What? Well, he still tells you that? I knew it! You have seen him! Where is he? I'm not calling you a liar. I'm only trying to find the truth. Trust your feelings. I seek to throw light on all of this. Any help you'd give would be appreciated. Aha! He sees him every day, even! Okay, he's got a hidden passage. I'll most certainly try. Thank you for your help, Ranfer. There it is. Secret passage. However... Um... Already we've kind of screwed up. We won't get the happiest little outcome of this whole thing. Because I really have a low intelligence, which is unfortunate.
No jokes. Um, so I'm going to load state right here, and I'm going to use the potion of intelligence to discuss on a more intellectual level with our buddy Ranver here, and it will allow us to have a more happy outcome. So if you'll excuse me, I'm going to really skip through these uh, lines of dialogue because the potion does eventually wear off, and I don't want that to happen. Okay. Trying to get through this fast. Have to get to the right dialogue option. Um. Two. If you guys want to read this, you can pause, but... Yeah, I know I'm really going up. Okay, yeah. See, we're talking about the shape. He's talking about the stone and the shape. These are really important to the story. So now I'm pausing and you can you can actually read. Wait. It is the shape that defines what the stone becomes? Hmm. Sorry I did have to skip through all that. See, now the potion is worn off. I don't think it's too late for... I think now we, uh, went through all the dialogue options, so it's okay. I want to make sure I understand this. Hmm, interesting. I understand. So in terms of your father, he felt he betrayed his stone and his shape. He had no longer become a dwarf, in a sense. And what is your opinion, Randall? Ranver, was it betrayal? Hmm. No answers. Thank you, Ranver. I feel I better understand your father. I love connecting to people. Can we continue our previous discussion? Hey, hey, there's a typo! Can we continue or previous? It's our. Oh, typo. Anyways. Um. Now this is just the conversation we had it already, already, so, um, I'll skip through that, and we can now head through the passage. And we can now get the happy little thing, hey. What? Who dares disturb the exile of Thunderstone? Forgive me, your highness. I had no choice but to. What? An elf? Have you any idea? I dream every day of the death I would rain down on your cursed race. And here you are, violating my solitude, my sorrow. Wait a minute. I came here with the blessing of your son. My son? Randver? He would dare permit such an affront. I've come here to writhe upon the blade of my sorrow, to live the thousand deaths by the ancient right of kings. These laws are passed down through the mountain from the beginning of remembered time. Your life is forfeit to them, as is my own. Do you understand? Stop! I come with news of the Black Mountain Clan. Yes, I'm very sure you do. You stole their honor and then stripped me of mine. I've thought much on your previous threats, Elf. Perhaps we should negotiate once again. What? I'm trying to find the Black Mountain Clan. What? How do you know? Speak quickly. Your life still hangs in the balance. Fine. I have a story to tell. Once upon a time... You know what? No, I'm not going into that. Forgive me, my elven friend. So much has happened to me. I've raged in these caverns for so long. I know you had nothing to do with what has gone before. I understand, Loghair. But what did happen so long ago? In all the time since the judgment was passed, I have never spoken of it. My shame has held my tongue. It seems that very shame shall now, finally, bring the betrayal to light. Please, these elves who approached you, who were they? Uh, a delegation of elves sent from the Silver Lady herself. The Silver Lady? They came not long after Bates had built his first steam engine. Technology in the hands of the human had spread and advanced at an alarming rate. 
and the elves were hit first and the hardest. Who is the Silver Lady? The Silver Lady is Mother Queen to the elves. She is very old, much older than I, and very powerful in the ways of magic. Why did technology spread so fast among the humans? There are many reasons. Humans, in comparison with the other races, live such short lives. Because of this, I believe that every human action is motivated through fear. The fear of death. Very true. You would think that this was a relative issue. That humans would learn to live with this limitation and accept it. This is not true. And? And therefore, humans, when confronted with any situation, see it through the veil of their own mortality. Achieve, advance, perform. Humans are constantly driven by the shadow of their own death. This fear, unfortunately, clouds their judgment, deadens their sense of right and wrong. Humans act first, think later, and feel last of all. How can you not like this game? Really, now? And in terms of technology... When Bates was given a look at our technology, he was overcome. As a human, his first thought was, what can I use this for? When it should have been, what is the cost of its use? Technology exploded in their hands because they are not burdened with our longevity. Humans rarely live long enough to see the consequences of their mistakes. What had the spread of technology done to the elves? Their forests. Their forests were being cleared with the help of technology. Massive, steam-powered clear-cutters. The oldest groves, towering and untouched for thousands of years, were being destroyed without prejudice. I saw much of this with my own eyes. The ancient forest of Morbahan is little more than a graveyard now. Were there elves living in the forest, forests of Morbihan? I'm unsure, but I don't believe so. But the delegation said that the crimes were against all elves. You see, elves feel a very strong connection to the world, to nature, and especially to forests. It's said that elven souls reside in the oldest trees. I don't know if this is true, but I do know there to be a strong connection between living things and magic. Was the Silver Lady angry about the Morbihan Forest? The delegation told me that she was extremely hurt and angry about the damage that had been done. According to them, because of her age and power, she was hurt the most by the clearing. Her connection to the forests was strongest of all. Where does the Silver Lady live? In Kintara the oldest city of the elves, somewhere within the glimmering forest. And she was angered by what had happened to the forest? The delegation told me that You've she was said this already. Have you spoken to her directly? Uh, no. I'm not sure if any but elven eyes have ever been laid upon her. Over the years, we have corresponded through messengers. Elves and dwarves are very different, and we tend to stay away from one another. I noticed. But our relationship as culturally strained as it may be, has always been civil. We don't necessarily understand one another, but we've always respected the differences. What are the major differences between dwarves and elves? I've said before that there is a strong connection between living things and magic, and the magic flows the most strongly in the veins of elves. Dwarves are very different. We feel a strong connection to the earth, but in another way. We love those things which are eternal, unchangeable, earth, stone, metal. In those things are strength, but not life as you know it. And the elven de delegation? What did they demand of you? They said that if the Black Mountain Clan was not punished, there would be war. War! I told them that a punishment was already being decided upon, and that we, as dwarves, would deal with them. They refused. They claimed rights as the afflicted, and their
therefore, as the judges. They agreed that exile was a suitable punishment, but they wanted to be the vessel of that retribution. We elves are not warlike people. It is not in our nature. No. I know that there was a time of violence many years ago among the elves. But from what I know of them, they are a very rational, peace-loving people. They know that ultimately, war benefits no one. I was very surprised when they came and threatened it. I see. There seem to be some inconsistencies here. Yes. The more we talk about it, I begin to get the same feeling. Yes, the elves would have been angry, but would they really have threatened war? Morbahan was a tragedy, but directly affected none of the elven communities. Perhaps my fear blinded me to such things before. And now this mystery. Where are the dwarves of the Black Mountain clan? What was it you feared, Lord Hare? Why agree to the terms? I am very old, stranger. You may know nothing of me, but believe me when I tell you that I've seen enough dwarven blood spilled to fill a thousand lifetimes. Have you any idea what it would mean for there to be a war between the elves and the dwarves? Our kingdom itself would not survive the conflict. And I was so very tired of filling tombs with the bodies of my people. But... But nothing. I chose to spare the dwarves, the world, the price of such a war. What was one clan's honor in comparison with the sheer cataclysm that would result otherwise? You ask what right they had? None. They merely forced a choice, and I chose the path of least resistance, the mm -hmm. least pain. That was my betrayal, stranger. What do you mean? You were merely acting out of concern. But that is the point. I am king of the dwarves. It is my responsibility to lead them, to protect them. But most importantly, it is my responsibility to defend their honor, their dwarven honor. By allowing my own fear or concern, regardless of how justified that fear might be, to overshadow their honor was an unforgivable transgression. Being a king isn't always easy. Even as king, the choice is never mine as to whether even one dwarf is stripped of his honor. I should have brought this to the people, or just flatly refused from the beginning. I was a coward, a failure, and this exile is my punishment. Given the choice now, I would have waged war against all of our kingdom to uphold the honor of that foolish little clan. I know. I know. That's because your stone is still true. What? What do you know of the nature of dwarven stone? You, an outsider? How could you possibly know of such things? Ranver put his faith in me. Perhaps you could as well. Perhaps. But you are not even a dwarf. These are beliefs and concepts it takes a lifetime to reconcile. How could you possibly begin to understand how I feel? I know that it is difficult to live by both stone and shape. Yes, I know. I've thought long and hard about this. Dwarven stone tells me that any transgression against our honor is unthinkable. But my shape, as king, as their father, told me to protect them. I'd shouldered so much of their pain, I could do it no longer. But is it part of life, defining that shape, learning from mistakes? Yes. Your words sound true, stranger. I know that no man is flawless. But I also know that each man's load to bear is different. A larger load carries more responsibility. Mine is heaviest of all. Therefore, the price for my betrayal must be the most costly. What is the nature of that betrayal? The nature of the betrayal? I failed my people. Isn't that what is most important here? The betrayal was against their stone. It seems, sadly, that my own stone is flawed. Failure is not one of stone, but of shape. Don't you see? You shame me, stranger. Your words are harsh, 
but undeniably true. Perhaps you are correct, but it doesn't change what I've done, nor the price I need to pay. It is best if you just leave an old dwarf here to rot. It is your place to right this wrong. No, you must pay the price. I cannot do this for you. How then? How can I do so? You must return to your people. Be true to stone and shape. By Alberic, you are right. I've been blinded by my own shame and not seen the true betrayal. I've betrayed myself and my people along with me. I shall return, stranger. I shall be king. By the name of Thunderstone, I swear it. I'm so very glad, but I still need some information. Of course. I'll do anything within my power to help you. These elves, who came to you, how can I find them? As I said, they were supposedly sent from the Silver Lady. I know very little of them. But I do have a name. Perhaps that will be enough for you to uncover this mystery. What is that name? The delegation was sent by someone named Mindorad, and I had many correspondences with this elf. Here is a letter that was sent to me by him. Where can I find this Mingarad? I'm unsure. The entire situation reeks of deception. I would tell you to seek him in Kintala, but I don't even know if the delegation was sent from there or not. Regardless, you may want to begin your search there. The Silver Lady might know of this Mingarad. And where is Kintara? I don't know, unfortunately. What? The location of Kintara is a well-guarded secret. What? But I do know it lies within the glimmering forest. The small town of Stillwater lies near the edge of that forest. Perhaps there you might find someone who knows where it is. Here, I'll mark your map with Stillwater's location. Thank you, Log here. I'll do my best to find out the truth. Wait. I'm much to blame for this situation. My fear and cowardice have helped in bringing about this tragedy. I feel I must do something to help you. Please, take Harrow, the first axe of my family. Its blade strikes true and deep in the hands of the righteous, especially if those hands are dwarven. Within it is the strength of the Thunderstones. I give it to you. I will put it to good use. I'm sure you will. Godspeed on your quest, my friend. And if you do find out what happened to the Black Mountain clan, Return to me. I would be very interested in finding out what really happened to them. Very interested. I just might do that. Goodbye, long hair. Wow, that was a really long conversation, but very, very important. I hope you guys paid attention. The story is appearing to become clear. Additionally, we can also get log hair as a follower. However, um. Not yet. We're extremely underleveled. But we did get Harrow, his axe. And we'll give it to Magnus, even though Magnus doesn't appear to want it. Oh well. Next time on Let's Play Arcanum, we head to Stillwater and try to find the location of Kintara. And maybe we'll do something else. Probably not, though. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'm Vega. See you next time.